Now it is not uncommon to find an air system like this within a workshop. You get loads of air tools, you can plug it in, you can blow stuff, you know, pump ties up, it's very useful. But I was thinking, if I want a bit more power, why can't I have a hydraulic system in my workshops? If I want to plug some rams in, some cylinders, hydraulic motors, something like that. Same thing, quick release, bosh, flick a switch, bang, 250 bar of hydraulic pushing force. Boom, that's what we're going to do. Hydraulic system for the shed. <laughs> so for my hydraulic system, I've got this, this 240 volt hydraulic pump. Now this is basically the 240 volt version of the 12 volt versions that I had in the Hulk Buster. You've got your reservoir tank, 2.2 kilowatt motor. We've got two 240 volt solenoid valves. So basically we're gonna hide this in the shed somewhere, have some bulkhead connectors for the hydraulics and the electrics, click them all in, connect them up to something. Beep, 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 beep. It's just like an air system, only with hydraulics. Awesome idea, Colin. Oh yes. I'm gonna shove it under here. Basically, this is a great excuse for me to tidy all this crap up. Yeah. There's still bits of Christmas tree under here from the Undecor 500C. What a video. Oh, look at that, look. I mean that. That's a fit, that is. Hey, oh, hey, what's this? Yes, yes, yes. I'm in shock. Now, before I fix this back, I've got to put some wires into it. I'm not going to film that because it's boring and I'll just explain it afterwards. Boring! I think you would agree that is a lovely job. Got it in there, got my bulkhead connectors, got my tow bar thing, you're ready to put my cable in. All we need now is some things to plug into it, Colin. Hmm, some sort of hydraulic nut peeler, maybe. Obvious tool to do first is my press. Now, I got this a while ago for broaching the keyways for the shredder, and it's lovely, it works well, it just takes quite a lot of effort, it takes ages for it to actually do anything. So as soon as I got it, I was like, Colin, you've got to motorise this. And this is kind of why we're doing all this. Now then, I'm not going to use this cylinder. I've got this one. This is the equivalent 10 ton pushing force. I'm going to cut the end off so it's got a, a little pin on it. And then mount that in there, probably chop the top off as well to make it as low as possible. And then we need a gauge, obviously, so we know how much wallop we're whacking through it. Got one of them. Various bits of fittings. We'll have another quick release uh, fitting on the end so we can just have like two surrogate tubes which will come from here into my pump under the desk. Same with electric cable, little switch. Boom, boom. I've got myself a mini hydraulic press. Yes! Yep, I'm wrecking stuff again. Can't go too mad welding this. We don't want to warp this cylinder. If it starts to twist or anything like that, then it's not going to seal properly. Then it's not going to work, Colin. So I'm going to do little bits, let it cool down, little bits, let it cool down. Then we'll have a nice bead round here and then we can weld this up into our frame. And ho oh yes, bit of plumbing to do after that. Uh -huh. 
Feels alright. But can you feel a circle coming? that. Just need to uh, do, do, do a bit of plumbing there, uh, Colin. Got the hoses all clicked in, rigged up myself a temporary switch, so we'll just purge it. Might be a bit juttery to start off with, and then once all the air's gone, we'll try and press something. Right, I don't know which is up or down on this yet, so. Right, that's back. Here we go. <laughs> is it gonna have a stiff spot near the weld? Who knows? There we are, what we're rocking, 100 and, that was about 160 bar. Now there is a little adjustment on the motor, so basically when it hits its end stop, it kind of goes into like a, a bypass mode, so it chucks all the oil back into the tank. Now I can adjust that so it does it at a higher pressure, but to be fair, I think I can live with 160 bar at the moment. Right, let's do it back again. Right, well that's a lot faster than pumping it by hand. Let's crush some stuff. I don't know what we're going to crush. Could do some broaching. Could broach a keyway. Seems kind of boring now though, I've done that. I've got a bit of plate in it. Uh, I think we'll try something a bit thicker. <laughs> this will make you choke. Bit of 40 by 40 box. Eh? Where's this going to go? Yes! Power! That. That is good. So Colin, you have successfully made yourself a hydraulic press, just a flick of a switch. Boom. What about a bit of the Christmas tree I shoved through my house? <laughs> right, let's put you there. <laughs> Go! Oh. I think I saw the chassis flex slightly then. Eh? I mean, it said 10 ton on the packet for the original one, but I bet they meant five, really, didn't they? Oh man, I could have pushed like a, a complete hole through the middle of that. Power! What about a brick from the house? <laughs> <laughs> this is fun. I've made a few improvements. It suddenly dawned on me that you might not want 10 tons of crushing force all the time and every time. So I've added this little valve and this little valve. Now, this valve is like a bypass, a pressure bypass, so I can adjust how much pressure I put into the cylinder. So if I only want a tiny bit of force, I can have a tiny bit of force. And then this valve is a flow restrictor and that basically alters the speed of which it comes down. So if I want it to just come down marginally to get things like set up, I can adjust how fast it goes down, as I will demonstrate. Right, I've got a piece of wood, which of course, as we know, would just be nothing to our beast. So if I turn this, oh, really, really slowly. Look at that, real slow, just coming down gradually. So if I wanted to go a bit faster, I'll just wind it out, like so. So it comes down. And it's going to hit our bit of wood, which normally would be completely crushed. And oh, it can't crush the bit of wood. How pathetic. 
until I start tightening this up. 25 bar, and above 50 bar, uh, 60 bar, uh, 70 bar, ah, and there we go. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And also, oh, I've been busy. It's an add-on to the end. So basically it's like a blank end and then of course you can screw whatever adaptions you want on it. I've got a big fat one as well, so I can put that on. Little Allen key in the end there, look. Screw you down. Put you there. Let's see if we can uh, put a little dent in this, yes? Right, put you there. There you go. <laughs> pressure, we need more pressure. Look at that. <laughs> right, really pleased with this. I've now got access to hydraulic power instantly. And it doesn't even have to be in the shed, which is longer hoses and cables. It can be outside the shed. It doesn't have to be a press. I can have a hydraulic assisted vice. We can have some snippers, some crimpers. You name it, if it's hydraulic, we can now power it really simply. Now then, obviously it's quite an expensive system compared to an air system, but then I was thinking actually, you know, a really decent air compressor is pretty much the same price as a hydraulic pump. You just got to have the cylinders and the hose and the fittings, but that's no different to air tools and drills and stuff like that. Right then, if you want to see me make more tools, I've got my bench mounted inset metal folder. That's fantastic. That'll be linked at the end of the video. And there we are. Right, see you in the next project. Subscribe, notes on, ha ha.